I like I was working late and then I was on track to get home and then I got home and then there was a note on my door that there was a package downstairs. So I ran downstairs and I ordered food from the food truck and went in and opened up the package. And then there was another package down there. It was a lot of packages. One of them was from Josh. So I had to call him and I didn't even get to eat the fucking food yet, but it's from some dude. That's like the seafood chef was on his truck. I don't know. This came in one of the packages. We're, we're good. We're happy. We're healthy. We're hungry. Uh, course. The, the seafood chef. I, yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm not here to define what a seafood chef or who the seafood chef is, but apparently he was the seafood chef. Okay, so I I, I have an issue with that, though, because you got it from a food truck. Yes. Seafood should not come from food trucks unless you're in the state Mm. of Hawaii. Agreed. Here's the fun fact. Seafood should not come from Nashville, Tennessee. That's another great point. So I feel like they cancel each other out. I don't know if that's how that works. It's literally math. Just math. Layers. Just it's just, just adding like onion, math. Like cakes have layers. Everybody loves cake. <laughs> All right. Well, we got our banter. Were so. you recording? Okay. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Hey! Oh, shit. What'd I do? Oh, no, that was good. <laughs> okay, sick. What's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, I'm Deke. Derek with College Football. Whoa, hey. Hey, hey. so, like, Deke, I, I do want to check oh, in real quick. Um, yes. College Football fandom. Massive. More than ever right now? The high peak. Highest peak. I honestly peak. feel like I'm back in college. I don't do schoolwork. I stay up late. I drink beers all the time, and I go to college football games, but I don't do schoolwork. Do you go to college football games, or do you? Go I went to a high school, school football, football game, game last week, baby. <laughs> yeah, it was sick. Uh, no, I want to get out to a UT game. I should have gone to the pit game. Uh, it happened really quick, and I've just been busy with work and life and stuff. I want to get to a UT, and I want to get to a Vanderbilt game. Both yep. big SEC. Uh, UT obviously much larger than Vanderbilt in terms of fandom and size. Uh, but, you know, Vandy's been taking it to UT the past couple of years. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. They're not looking very good this year. Oh, no, uh, no. They're, they're all they're bad, all terrible. But, yeah. You know, it's fine. Um, yeah, no, I'm – are they playing – no, I think Vandy – isn't Vandy playing like UConn or something this week? It's like, uh, it's like a let's garbage. Take a look. It's like a toilet bowl situation we got i think think so because uconn is like the worst team in fbs are they really they're bad own five losing like i think they lost like 52 to nothing to like purdue it's uh yeah they play they play uconn and then next week they play uh florida yeah yikes yeah well they got thrashed by fucking georgia this week 62 nothing for the geniuses of vanderbilt they are geniuses they you, really are. You can't take that away from them. It's like every, education stays forever. Yeah, that's what they say. But I mean, if you're an NFL star, I guess you know that might counteract it a little bit. Education about football. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. All right, uh, Deke, what are you drinking, brother? Uh, I gotta be completely honest with you. I chugged my cores really fast when I had to open those packages, and I need to go pick up more for tomorrow. So I don't have another drink. But you were drinking the cores. Oh, I chugged two cores already today. Needed oh, nice. it after today's work. And then I realized we do this segment. Uh, I'll be right back. I have an idea. All right. Nothing quite like just waiting to the last minute. It's what we do on the show. I will do a shot of dennis's pink whitney don't worry mom it is low alcohol content it actually really is barely even alcohol which is kind of cool out of my don't mess with texas nice boot nice das boot so it's not cores which i i I will go and get it out of the trash can don't tempt me Mm -hmm. tomorrow i need to go out and get all the cores in the world for josh's last tbd um shout out cores we love cores i'm obsessed with cores just need to go get more yep yeah i'm drinking this is the first time I'm drinking Banquet in a long time. Really? Yep. Did you see the boot turn? <laughs> I, I did, yeah. Yeah, I did. 
Banquet's good, bro. Banquet's really good. Uh, unsung wow. hero. That's really good. It's the unsung hero of the Coors family. If you know, you know. Yeah. Huh. I didn't think I would like it that much. You know, like I've been saying, company man. Yeah, Maybe. exactly. Hey, ever since we, ever since you know us and Coors PGH teamed up, Coors has been tasting a lot better. Just saying. It's like, like uh, it's like that girl in high school. Yeah, wasn't hot because her hair was in ponytail. Shout out to old rom coms. Hair down, glasses off, glasses off. Paint schmock. Return for a dress. Coors. Bingo. Excellent execution. <laughs> Speaking of excellent best. execution, um, shout out another shout out to Coors. Mm-hmm. Josh sent me, sent these my way. Uh, a little token of appreciation from our guys and girls over at Coors PGH. A pair of Ray Bans in a kind of a sick little carrying case. Not bad. <laughs> so I'm going to be sporting these tonight. There it is. Yeah. Bye bye Pit Vipers. No, Hello, I still got them Coors. here. <laughs> Fair, fair, fair. Coors Ray Bands. Wow, you can actually see the screen. Oh, that yeah. is a hilariously amazing. Oh, yeah. Those are poker Ray Bands. Oh, that, yeah. No, I, I pulled them out for the first time, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, I got to be careful Love with it. what I'm looking up over here. <laughs> All right, Deke. Um, let's just jump right into it with the recap. Yes, sir. Recap for week four. So we're going to start here. Arkansas, I know the score doesn't look like it but arkansas essentially shit pumped a and m there's been a lot of games like that this year where it's like the score was not uh what represented the game well uh yeah a and m kind of frauds gonna be honest uh, yeah i don't i don't i didn't know how i felt about a and m until i watched this game and then i really i realized that they're just not that good they're pretenders I still think they do have a top tier blue chip running back and Spiller yeah. uh, coming in there at 95 yards and a tutty for yeah. that game. But I'll tell you what, I'm glad. I don't know. I, I like Texas A&M. I like Texas Tech because uh, I feel like, well, hear me out. I feel like they are the rivals in some kind of like weird, twisted Superman, not Superman to Texas. Yeah, no, they definitely they're definitely I would say they're more rivals than like Texas Tech, you know. Like, I oh, like for sure, Texas for sure. Texas Tech doesn't really touch them, but like, but for Texas Tech is cool when they're good. Shout out Michael Crabtree. Yeah, and Mike Leach. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I. It, it just looked like. Well, first of all, A and M had they had no answer on offense. Mm-hmm. Like Arkansas was running all over them. I I felt like I was watching an entire game of A and M bubble screens that got <laughs> tackled for loss. Like that's just, and that probably wasn't the case because I think Calzada made a few nice throws. That's just what it felt like, though. Like, yeah, bunch of bubble screens that just did not work, and it just seemed like Jimbo Fisher just his fucking laminated flow chart just didn't have anything showing what to do when your line can't hold Arkansas. Like it just it showed yeah. that if any, like they were just too rigid with it. And I don't know if it's because they didn't think Calzada could actually do anything else, but he looked like a deer in the <laughs> headlights. All day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing here is if you're going to let KJ Jefferson go for 212 yards, you can't let Traylon Burns go for 167. Yeah. Like you can't get at like that's not 212 is not an astronomical number of yards in college football. College mm-hmm. football is an air raid tradition, even though we did say Arkansas got, you know, ran all over AM. But you have a receiver coming out here with six catches and 167 yards yep. in the air. That's burnt. Six catches, twenty-seven and point eight yards per cat. Like, yeah, what are you doing, man? Yeah, and well, they also and I think KJ Jefferson might actually be good, but on Saturday he looked like the reincarnation of Cam Newton. <laughs> like, no joke. Like he yeah. was just running all over those motherfuckers. Like, it it never felt like that. I mean, I looked like. I looked up at halftime. It was like what seventeen to three. I think it wasn't even yeah it seventeen to three at half. Wasn't even close. And A and M Spiller was the only good thing about A and M that day. And like he was the only reason they were even close. And that, the defense yeah. came up big. I think in the second half. But like at that point, it was over. You, you just never felt like A and M had a chance, even from the get go. Like nah, yeah. agreed, man. Yep. Yeah. What what did I say last week? Arkansas was going to go in with a, with a big old swinging dick. Razorback, baby. Razorback. Razorback. 
Uh, I think they might actually be good, but we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, can- you know who isn't good? <laughs> hmm. Was that a transition to the next topic, or were you still talking about that game? No, good. No, that was perfect. fucking Clemson sucks. Yeah, I don't. They're just like I said, Clemson just isn't good. They're just bad, and it's kind of crazy. Do you know what this means to me? Mm. This means that Nick Saban is the greatest coach ever. Oh, like if yeah, if you didn't already think that before. You have to think that now. But I think that the success that Dabo has been able to create recently on the back of the Saban idea Mm -hmm. has at least made me be like, okay, college is so drastically different. Eh, whatever. I still think there's a massive difference, but the fact that Alabama has never, ever had a year like this Mm -mm. is crazy. Mm -mm. Yeah. Dabo looks... I've never seen Nick Saban, besides him just being Saban and, you know, being all crabby. I've never seen Saban be defeated. Dabo yep. fucking looks like he has no answers. Right also, now. the running out in front of his team thing. Weird. 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 Weird move. Literally, the touch the rock should be the number one thing in that school. That always has been. It always will be. And then the players run down. What a weirdo. Hey, that's the thing. He, it's weird that he has made that about himself. Yeah. That's what's weird. Like, and he always, I didn't think he was like that early on. I that's where I. That's where I'm at. That's I. That's why I was always very skeptical, and I. I think I've been on record saying this. I was always skeptical about Dabo being this, you know, the big Jesus guy. That was a bunch of horseshit. I think he heir apparent to Saban. Yeah, he's just he's just not. And I don't think it's Dabo's fault. I think if anything, really, it just it goes to show you that they they're stale right now. Yes, they haven't adapted, and and you can. You know, you can talk all you want about them keeping their staff, for, which is very impressive. But at the same time, you also kind of need new people to come into the building with new ideas. Yeah. Because everyone does that. So you can't be he, the only one. Well, not Saban that. does it on the other end of it. He loses yeah. coaches to head coaching jobs, so he has to do it. Yeah. But also, I want to say, uh, when you only have four people in an entire game of college football catch a ball, mm-hmm. two of which caught one ball each, and one of the guys caught two balls, that's mm-hmm. it. What the hell? NC State is always solid. That is not good. Mm-mm. No, it, they should be blowing. I'm shocked that they're ranked right now. They're ranked yes. because their name is Clemson. Yes. And that's it. And that's It wasn't even like their defense. Their defense has been kind of their saving grace so far. Even in, even in the, the early Trevor Lawrence days, their defense has always been oh, yeah. very good. It's And it still is very good. It, they didn't look that great. No, Leary got Leary threw thirty two t- uh, completions for two thirty eight and four tutties. Yeah, yeah. No, I just like I said, they're they're getting they're getting stale. It, the way that I think of it, I think of Clemson as that kid that was hot shit in elementary school or middle school, making fart jokes all the time. But then he keeps making fart jokes when he gets to college, you know. And everyone's oh, like, "This man. kid's weird." Is Clemson Benny Buckets? <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Ben. Congrats on your win tonight. Just want to throw that out there. Um. Yeah, but Clemson. No, I agree. Bad. I agree. I agree. Yeah, Clemson bad. I mean, they got cooked for fourteen receptions, one hundred and sixteen yards. Yeah, one it's, guy. It's crazy. You know that was their first l- loss. It was they snapped a thirty-five game winning streak against unranked unranked opponents. Jeez. Like that's pathetic. They're not. Their O line sucks. Their yep. line is just horrendous, and dude. also run it with Will Shipley. He's like the yeah, number one running what, back in I the don't nation. Fucking understand dude, that DJ had just as many carries. It was nine and eleven was the split. That's insane. You have a horse. Fucking ride him. Like Jesus Christ. Um. All right. Clemson bad. NC State. I don't even know if they're good. That's the thing. NC State looks All we know is decent, Clemson's bad. But, yeah, we do know that Clemson's bad. <laughs> uh, another confusing game that really confused me. I don't know if Notre Dame is good or if Wisconsin is just very bad. I, I can't tell. I mean, it was 13-10 going – or, or, or uh, 10-10 going into the yep. fourth, excuse me. Yeah. They put then, up 31 more f- points. Yeah. Well, I well that's what – that's what that, – it that was so crazy. And I, I know one of them was – special teams it was a yeah. kickoff or punt return but still like 
especially against Wisco's defense. That's a team with zero confidence right now. Yeah. Like, who was their win against? Do you know? Let me look it up too. So I think they've had two. I don't think it was against anyone great, but I could. It's kind of my guess. They played. Um, so obviously they lost to Penn State. They played Eastern Michigan. They won thirty-four to seven. Yeah. I mean that Penn State game was close, and they it beat was. the team they should have beat. But then they walk in here and get beat by the fraud of all frauds. It, yeah, it just. Well, that's the thing. It, Notre Dame. It, that's why Notre Dame just confuses me because they look so inconsistent. I'm still not bought in on them, but like you look at the final score here. That's the thing. If it's tied ten ten going into the fourth, and then you just explode, I I think that's a fluke. I think that mm-hmm. that that uh, final score right there does not tell the whole story, especially against Graham Mertz, who fucking stinks. Mm-hmm. He stinks. Um, it, not only that, dude, they were on their third string quarterback. In the fourth yeah. quarter. And they still put out fucking 31 points. Drew Pine came in, baby. Dude. What a... Yeah. It, good for Jack Cohn getting the fuck out. Well, I'm glad... I'm happy for that guy. Fuck Notre Dame, but I'm happy for that guy because those motherfuckers up there just... They were praising Graham Mertz. Yep. Mm-hmm. Thinking he's a se- second coming of Jesus Christ. And, like, he's not. He's just not no. that good. At Thank least God. right now. Like I'd be frustrated if he was good. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Ugh. that. Plus, I just don't like Wisconsin. I don't. That's the thing. I I I respect Wisconsin as like a school because Wisconsin. They have some good teams. Yeah, no, they've had some very good teams, and like, I I definitely don't think the Penn State and Wisconsin have a rivalry. If anything, I think yeah. we're two of the more similar schools in the country. Like, who is Wisconsin rival? If you had to pick one. Maybe I think Minnesota. sometimes it's. Maybe oh, Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. I do think that they think Penn State and them have a rivalry, but I also think Ohio State doesn't think them and Penn State have a rivalry. Yep. If that's how it you know what I mean? Like yep. Yeah, well that's the yeah, Wisconsin I don't that's the thing. I don't I I wouldn't consider it a rivalry. I would consider it a good two very game, similar teams. Yeah, a good game almost every time. A- again, they never play, it's never a dirty game. Like no. it's never it's we I don't hate Wisconsin. It's just they're just a very respectable program and very comparable. So, yeah, I don't know. I Again, I just, I'm not bought in on Notre Dame. Man. You can't show me one quarter of blowing out a team and convince me that they're good. Not yeah. yet. Not yet. Especially after right. almost losing to Toledo, almost losing to Florida State. Who <laughs> The Toledo was, thing frustrated me. I wish they would have lost to Toledo. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. We say it every week. Every why the, week. Why the fuck do people still believe in Oklahoma? And why is West Virginia not ranked? If they didn't win, I know, but yeah. I still like West Virginia. Oklahoma being its I don't I won't ruin it for the rankings, being where they are, even at four no, they suck. Yeah. They are not good at football. Spencer Rattler not winning the Heisman. Fraud. Fra- fraud. Fraud. <laughs> Eric Gray, fraud. Kennedy Brooks, fraud. Michael Woods, big fraud. I don't know. They just, I just don't like Oklahoma at all this year. And I think if Spencer Rattler was good at football, I would like them. Mm-hmm. I always like when they have a sexy quarterback. Yeah. It will, this West Virginia is not a game. It, that's not a game where you should win by three. No, no, no. Not as the sixth team in the nation to an you, unranked West Virginia. And also, they're supposed to be Oklahoma. You're telling me they only put up 16 fucking points. Like, get the fuck out of here. I, every year, they try, and I, I've sniffed it out every for the past five years. Every year, they try to convince us that Oklahoma is the real deal, and they're just not. They're not I'm just gl- I hope that Oklahoma just doesn't make the, like, they should be banned from the Final Four because, hear me out, they always suck in it. They should just be banned from it. it. The only time they haven't was when they barely lost to Georgia in the Rose Bowl. Yep. That one time. That was an amazing game. Thank God. But, like, dude, oh, I don't – they are not the number six team in the country. I, I no do want to throw throw this out there. Uh, Dre and I had an argument once about the definition of a QB whisperer. A QB whisperer, in my definition, does not – get premier talent and then premier talent is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So Baker to K1 to Jalen Hurts, all three of those guys. You have Spencer Rattler, who's supposed to be the next up, and he is dog shit. Yep. I don't think he's a QB whisperer. Yep. No, I don't think he is either. I, well, I, I think I think he plays in the Big 12. Yep. That's, That's what it totally, is. Yep, there it is. Go I, to the I, SEC. Oh, they're tr- they're trying. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Oklahoma's they're just that scumbag boyfriend that always just they do enough to like not let the yep. girl break up with them, aka college football. And but they it's Love always like analogy. the bare it's always the bare minimum with them. God, I've it's not even like I hate Oklahoma. It's just I'm sick of being lied to. Yes. Every year. I'm sick of us pretending that they deserve yeah, to be just, in the playoffs and then they get their shit handed to them. Let's just, let's, we're not, I'm not going to, let's not keep up this charade anymore. They're, yeah, it, I'm, I'm so Ooh, out. It's just I, a lot. I, yeah. I've been out on Oklahoma all year from the start, <laughs> but still like I'm especially out now. It, Good. Whatever. Um, Iowa state done. It, n- not, I think now the Big Twelve is bad, so they there's always they, a chance that they two and two is still alive. Yep, always, and it's only one loss in the Big Twelve. Yep. They're just done as far as the playoff goes because there's no way a two loss team gets no. to the playoff. Um, Unless it's two loss Alabama who lost to Georgia and Clemson or some shit. Yeah, like, it, but like, it, now granted, I I think they can take some positives away in that game, and part of it was because they were down big. They almost came back. The I don't know if you saw the two point conversion attempt at the end. No. Of the game. it was hilarious. Brock Purdy just dropped the ball. Oh, yeah. to win or to tie it too, huh? Yep, to tie it. What an idiot! Yep. Yeah, yeah, he's fallen so far off my radar. It's not even funny. Yeah, Brees Hall still a beast. Put up three bodies. Dog. Yeah, dog. Brock Purdy. Dog, and eh, not really, but not a dog. More of a, more of a. What am I trying to say? Douche. Grain, grangy puppy. <laughs> Squirrel. Uh, yeah, it's just, it sucks. Cause... Nuts to like him. What? It's because you got to be nuts to like him. Oh, nice. Thanks. I was just starting to say like behind you while you said it takes. So it was a casual thing, but then I, I like it, it's not like funny enough I to be presented to the front it. of the conversation. I, I, I know, but it's not funny enough to be the part of the conversation. Yeah, just my, I sorry. I'm sorry. I'm no, you're good. Uh, you, you, it, go, you go. I, I am disappointed though because I was excited about Iowa State. I don't. Not like I'm a big Iowa State mm. fan. I was excited about them because they... Sounds don't. like you picked the wrong Iowa school. I did. I did. Yeah, I did. But, yeah, they they were they were the sexy pick. And I had no reason to... Th- they had so many... They're wasting so many returning starters. Yeah. Because they brought back so many returning starters. And they yeah. were so hyped because of that one fact. Now all of those guys are going to fall in the draft. Yeah, it's it sucks. It but I mean, yeah, I was wrong about Iowa State. I said, you know, they were going to be one of the teams to watch. On they're out out of it pretty early. They are one of the teams to watch. Fail. Yeah, I mean, they might come back strong and win the Big Twelve, but at that point, who gives a shit? Because it, again, they have two losses, so like, yep. Big Twelve won't mean anything in in that case. Um, all right, AP rankings. Uh, Penn State jumping up to four doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I lie. had questions about that. I'm not gonna lie. I think part of it was because Oklahoma slid. True. And I don't. I don't hate Penn State for it, but the fact that they surpassed Iowa and Cincy was where I was kind of like, eh. yeah. And I mean, going. I think it's just because Iowa. Well, Iowa kind of struggled against Colorado State this weekend, Fair. and that's a really fucking bad program. Um, but I mean, that's the thing. Penn State was playing. Now they were the seventh. You know, say what you want about it. They were the seventh ranked FCS school in the country. But you should blow Villanova out of the water. Yep. They should have ran all over him. Sean Clifford had a great game, but I, I w- I'm not saying that Penn State had a great game against a, yeah. an opponent that they should have just torched way more than they did. But at the same time, I'm. It just it shocks me that they moved above. It had to be just the Colorado State factor. That, yeah, that had to be it. Um, uh, Oklahoma slides back. Uh, Arkansas sliding up. 
I, their first game in. Razor back, baby. Their, their Razor first back. game in. I'm excited about that team. I, they're they're playing Georgia this week, so I don't I don't know how long that's going to last. But that team f- believes that they can fucking go all yes. the way that this year, and I'm ex- I'm excited to watch it, dude. Sam Pittman, good for that guy. Yes, never been a head coach in his career. First head coaching job has them rocking. Turn that program around in pretty much a year. So. Good for those guys, honestly. Uh, Agreed. Fuck, fucking Notre Dame. Um, <laughs> Ohio State s- slides down one. Uh, I'll get to something on Ohio State a little later. Okay. Um, I like Michigan still at fourteen undefeated. Yeah, another team. Another team to watch. Now they struggled against Rutgers, but I think that speaks more to Rutgers than it does. Graciano's Michigan. got that team going strong right yep. now. I I agree. I thought that that was going to be a tougher game than people were. Giving, yep. giving it credit for um but yeah AM obviously slides back um fresno state keeps keeps moving up oklahoma state i was wrong about them they beat k-state this weekend it looked pretty impressive doing it ucla back in the top 25 yeah i don't I mind feel it. like yeah I, I wish they were higher after yeah. all the hype we gave ucla i just big ucla guys yep um Baylor, big win over Iowa State. Um, Auburn, they slid up. I'm confused by that because they <laughs> barely beat Georgia State. Not a good game for Penn State fans. No. Because between Wisco and Auburn, barely beating Georgia State. it's gonna. They have to maintain a lot of victories here to get into the playoffs. And they have a ton. We, we got a ton ahead of us, too. Um what else we got? NC State sliding in. Wake Forest. Interested to see Wake Forest try to, you know, I, I want to see what they can do for sure. And uh, Clemson shouldn't even be on. They're, they're, I think there are better teams right now. They're, they're than Clemson? Few, yeah, there are a few undefeated teams right now that I think should be in the top 25 over Clemson because Clemson just right now is not good. It's tough. Uh, I do want to bring up, I always talk about QB1 as like my favorite show. Yep. Wake Forest's quarterback, yep. Sam Hartman, 270 mm-hmm. yards, three touchdowns against Virginia. He was the same quarterback class as Justin Fields, yep. uh, and it was awesome, and I'm so glad he's doing well. Mm-hmm. So just wanted to shout that out there. Yep. Uh, I feel you with Clemson, but it's also – it is because it's Clemson. I, yeah, but that's the bullshit. That's yeah, I do I wish hate. it was Wyoming. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> Dude, I think people are sleeping on Kentucky right now. I think people mm. are. Uh, there are a few other undefeated teams that I think people are kind of looking past right now. Yeah, I agree. that are actually looking pretty good. Um, just fucking Clemson, man. I, 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 I want to feel bad for them, but I just I'm not a big Davo guy. Like I feel bad for the players right now. I do too. That's who I feel but, bad for is the mm-hmm. players for signing up for this circus and uh, they get Davo. Yeah. All right. Deke, on tap. What do you got? <laughs> Let's do it, baby. So I just want to go through my top 10 uh, teams right now that are going to finish out where the NFL draft order uh, presents itself. The point of this exercise is to sit down here and kind of go through a little bit of the team needs. Uh, So this is much more from an NFL standpoint, but I believe the draft is the perfect merge between college football and the pros because first off, duh. And second off, it really is the reason I started getting into college football. So I think college football fans find a reason to like the NFL and NFL fans find a reason to like college football and football fans are happy. Who I have coming in at the number 10 overall pick. uh, It's sad to say it. It's one of those things where I wish it wasn't here. And I almost thought about putting them just at 11. So I didn't have to Pittsburgh Steelers at one and two. Hear me out. It's looked horrible. Uh, Pieces have looked terrific. It has looked horrible. The Pittsburgh Steelers absolutely need a quarterback out of this draft class. Reason being, I do love Dwayne Haskins. I hate Mason Rudolph. Big Ben needs to retire. It doesn't matter if Haskins walks into camp. And I understand there's a lot of needs on that team, but they need a quarterback. They need one of the top guys. I'm not in love with Spencer Ritter despite that team doing well. There's a couple guys out there that look to be the blue chip guys out of this class. I'm giving it a little bit longer to decide who I want the Steelers to take and buy a jersey of them. Uh, the Steelers at 10. Coming in at number nine is a team that also kind of probably needs a quarterback, and that's the Washington football team at one and two. Uh, Taylor Heineke is a dog. Ryan Fitzpatrick, old dog. 
and he's injured prone, which is a weird thing to say because he not really is, but like he's been getting injured later in his career. Uh, they have the best front four in football, a elite running back. They need to get a quarterback in here. I like Heineke a lot, but he is not the franchise. Coming in at one and two at the eight position is the Philadelphia Eagles. I like Jalen Hurts, and I think Jalen Hurts is the quarterback of the future for the Eagles, but I do not see them targeting quarterback this high despite them not naming him the starter. But I do think they have a terrible season. I do like them targeting uh, Stingley out of LSU to try and get some secondary help because they've needed some big issues there. Uh, but they could also easily go the running back position if Miles Sanders continues to have somewhat of a committee career. Uh, coming in next, I have the Giants at 0-3. Uh, I do have some 1-2 and two teams above them. The reason I have the Giants here is because I do think they'll eventually get it together. They've shown flashes. The Giants, I also have them looking for quarterback. Daniel Jones comes into this season. Uh, his fifth-year option is almost here. Hasn't proven he's anything more than just an NFL quarterback. If the Giants want to win, they will go quarterback. Coming in after that is another team that is quarterback hungry. So keep in mind that is one, two, three, four teams out of the top five there. That is the Falcons at one and two. You have Calvin Ridley. You have Kyle Pitts. You have an elite offensive line, a run game that's a little miscellaneous, and Matt Ryan, who is pushing 40 right now. It feels like 50. It feels like 60. They'll be targeting a quarterback to cement the fact that they took Kyle Pitts coming in at one and two above them. I also believe that their one win may have been the worst thing in franchise when they need a quarterback unless the Tyrod Taylor effect is real. That is the Texans. They come in at one and two. They need a lot. A lot of people had them as the number one overall pick taking uh, Thibodeau out of Oregon. I get it. They still technically have Watson, but Watson will never be a Texan again. I do think they go quarterback if David Mills doesn't continue it or they trade back. Uh, the next three teams are 0-3, so plug them anywhere you like. I have them set up as the Jets coming in with the third overall pick. I like Zach Wilson, despite the fact that he has looked bad this year. Uh, I think the kid has an arm and hasn't had a chance to breathe. The line's been injury prone, had some concerns. The running game is atrocious. I like Corey Davis at the wide receiver position with Elijah Moore, Jameson Crowder. But that defense is not good either. So the Jets won't target quarterback. They could trade back or take Thibodeau, considering the top two teams may look another direction. At number two, because I believe he will get a win, Trevor Lawrence. Clearly don't need a quarterback. But what they do need, weapons on offense, a better offensive line, and then just players on defense. They will take a vending machine coordinator at this point because they can't do shit. The only thing actually working for their team is James Robinson when they give him the ball. The number one overall pick. Hate to do it to you, Behrman. It's the Detroit Lions. I think they'll win a game or two because their running attack with Swift and Williams is too high, but I absolutely guarantee one thing. The Detroit Lions need a franchise quarterback. Jared Goff is not the future, and I do believe come draft day, the Lions will be drafting whoever comes out of this class at number one. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that there are any good enough quarterbacks for the I know we need it but the Steelers I just there's not no one has impressed me man no I, like not a single quarterback in the country and now do I look at and go that guy's good other than Bama's who will not be in this draft class yep yep what if uh what if we just like you know just hold it off for a few years go for my boy uh Grace McCall how'd you feel about that <laughs> just dive into the dirt for that long yeah yeah I'm cool with it yeah I would mind. I also think that we should, if we don't like any of the quarterbacks of the 10 spot, just trade that pick for someone else's quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care who it is. Aaron just give Rogers. us somebody. That's a very big possibility, so we will see. I, I would, would be that. ecstatic. Yeah. I I don't even know if that you would say that that's like a Band-Aid, but if anything, it gets, us, three, four, it gets us over the hump for a few that years. That is a full kidney transplant. Yeah, that is it pumps now he's not going to be around forever and you got to start looking at quarterbacks eventually. 2 years. But like, yeah, that's Two years. thanks. Um yeah, I don't know. All right, Deke. Favorite time of the week right here. Yeah. He couldn't get me a shrunken head, so I got a t-shirt. All right, so this week we're going with Ohio State head head coach Ryan Day. His quote you can't play everybody. There's a bigger story here. Kayvon Pope, it was a weird story, uh, walks, he makes a scene uh, during their game with Akron, or I think they were playing Akron. He gets waved off, 
after uh, thinking that he's going to get subbed on during a play. Um, gets waved off, throws a tantrum, walks off the field, tweets from the locker room, fuck Ohio State. As of yesterday, he is in the transfer portal and is no longer with the program. The balls that this Dude, kid it's has, amazing. like, wow. Did wow. you see what it was, like, all about? What, like, what he freaked out about or the video or anything? I've seen the video, yeah. Oh, he, he just, like, he looks like a kid is the thing. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, that's a massive red flag to whoever he's transferring to. Yep. And it's upsetting, but here's the thing. No apology is going to erase that tweet from the existence of the internet. The internet is a dark place. Yep. Yeah, and, well, first of all, spelling fuck with two Cs, it's a thick way to spell fuck right there. That's um, why, because you can always come back and say it's an acronym. Yep, there there you go, yeah. Fund University Child Care. That's, or Fulton something community college. Mm. Fr- friend, friendship and Unity Community College, how about that? Friendship and Unity Community College. Yep, that's right. <laughs> It's it's hysterical. Yeah, he gets told he's not going in the game. Dude freaks out. Fuck Ohio State. Uh, issues an apology and enters the transfer portal. Yep. What a day for Kayvon Pope. Yep. And again, it just this is weird. And I don't necessarily think it's going to derail Ohio State season. It's not like he was a big impact guy or anything. But I, I don't know something. It smells like something's off over there. Like, really. Yeah, dude, you you have now. Granted, it might just be this guy. There's a lot of shit going wrong over there that people are not happy with at Ohio State. Their defense sucks. Um, Ryan Day looks like he doesn't have any answers on defense, and he, mm-hmm. they they keep trying. Which is the things. shock for like, me with Ryan Day. He's always looked very good. Yeah, no, it's concerning and, that he doesn't. Yeah, and well, and that's the thing. I don't know. He's an offensive mastermind. And they have the weapons on offense to outscore anyone, but can they keep points off the board? It's just they. I, I'm not saying they're dumpster fire, but something something feels off over there. I don't know if it's locker room culture, and it may just be this guy that wa- you know walks off and quits the program at halftime. I don't know though. This is this is weird and yeah, it smells fishy. It really, is. I don't know. It smells like something's off. Okay, I I, I don't hate that man. I yeah. don't hate that. Yeah, and that's not just the Penn State fan being hopeful. That's just me. I don't know. That's that's weird. With the season that they've had so far, that just seems weird. It so. also brings me to, uh, I think it was Saban. Was, I think it was a Saban quote where he got angry and said that coaches, he's like, I thought coaches knew best. I thought coaches knew who was a player and who wasn't about someone not getting playing time. Yeah. yeah. I think that the way Ryan day handled it was probably around that same mentality, but yep. he's not Nick Saban. And that's why this blew up. Yeah. Well, it blew up because it was on national TV and well, Twitter immediately. So, and I'm surprised got, they only got that many likes before he pulled it down. Yeah, I know. I know. And then he tweeted right after good luck to all my teammates. Yep. Classy. Hey, cheers. one of those. He met that. Yep. Gotta love Ohio state. Yep. Um, Yeah. I don't know. Ryan Day, and no one will ever touch Nick Saban. So, so quit asking. Um, all right. Deke, big games this week. Yes, sir. Very fun. Very interesting slate of games this weekend. Starting off the top, obviously the biggest one. Arkansas, Georgia. I don't know how it, it hurts me to do this. I'm going to go with Georgia here, and I think it's just because in my opinion, right now, they are the best team in the country. Mm-hmm. Best defense in the country. Having said that, Texas A&M is the number two t- defense in the country, and K.J. Jefferson ran all over them. So I think, <laughs> it, I think it'll be close. But yeah, I'm going, I think I'm going with Georgia here. Okay. And as we always discuss here, uh, I like to attack with the line. And, and you know what? Georgia is an 18.5 point favorite. It seems I, large. It does, which is why I'm going Arkansas to cover 18 and a half points. Uh, and in that game, the over under set at 48. Give me. Oh, that's a tough one. What was I feel it? like both these teams 48? are good. Uh, 48, yeah. Mm. 
Mm. I'm going to go under with yep. Arkansas I would. covering. I would. Yeah. So give me Arkansas there. Arkan well, you're going to Arkansas to cover 18 and a half. Okay, but you're going to are you taking Georgia to win? Oh, we've we've always done this differently. I thought I apologize. <laughs> uh yeah, Georgia wins. I've always just given you my Damn. pick with the spread, but that makes a lot of sense. All right. <laughs> I want them to win this one. Just less than 18 and a half. Yeah. I I wanted to pick Arkansas so bad. Like, I <laughs> really did. Back, just, baby. Dude. That was my loophole. That was what I was trying to do is to get you to let me pick Arkansas with the spread. Yeah. I, they're frisky, man. I just, I, I, I like them. I don't know. It's, it's, they're different. There's something about Georgia winning a natty that I don't hate. Yeah. But also, if they lost, I would not care at all. I agree. Hey, well, it's Kirby Smart's year. This is it. If he this doesn't is win literally, it, if he doesn't win it this year, what are we doing here? Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate because Mark Rick did the same thing at Georgia. He he got them off <laughs> so high, and then they they just never won, and he just kind of faded off. Yeah. Uh, um, Cincy Notre Dame. I think this is without a doubt a playoff shaping game. Yes. 100%. Or at least a playoff picture shaping game. Um. I'm not bought in on Notre Dame yet, and I think since he has some confidence right now, even though they're on the road, Notre Dame is just inconsistent. I'm going since he. I don't hate it. Um, I hate Notre Dame, which means that I'm taking them to beat Cincinnati. Yep. Uh, right now, since he's one and a half point favorites, it's going to be a tight game. Like you said, Notre Dame's super inconsistent. For some reason, I feel like they could be consistent against Cincy and then shoot themselves in the foot against someone lesser. Yeah, that's – I don't know, though, because in my mind, for some reason in my mind, I know that, it, you know, Cincy's ranked higher. But at the same time, I, I have a feeling that they're kind of overlooking this game. And I don't know what gives me that yep. feeling, but I just – I have a feeling that the players are overlooking this game thinking that it's not a Power 5 team. Even Don't hit it one bit. They have one of the best defenses in the country. So agreed. Um, Ole Miss, Alabama. God, I want to take Ole Miss because Lane Kiffin is the fucking man. <laughs> and he get under his skin. Um, and Matt Corral, electric. That offense is fucking fun to watch. Looks good, dude. Like they look good. It, unfortunately, it's at Bama. Yep. That's what's gonna get them. I'm going Bama here because Nick Saban is 23-0 against former assistants. Yeah, so uh, a random Steelers fan I met at the bar on Sunday, he went to Ole Miss and was telling me that we need to draft their quarterback. Uh, And I don't think he's wrong based on the fact that every other quarterback has sucked. But the wheel, the machine, the everything you could use as an analogy, the steamroller keeps going. Alabama takes this one easily. I don't know about easily. but I'll take easily. I think... 10 32 10 I think 30, it might be a, I think it'll be a high scoring game if I'm 39 10 40 10 it's not what 41. I mean 41 well, you ah? it's not what I, I think it's going to be end of the 60, day I think 10. it's going to be like 52 38 or something okay 60 to 10 yeah yeah Keep going. okay I just want to cover the over okay 61 what is it what is he I thought I saw 80 on this game Let's see. I think it might be. Uh, currently, right now, Alabama's 14 and a half points favorites, and it is set at 80. Yep. It's wow. Because of, of Ole Miss. And Alabama's not going to go down Fine, quietly. I'll do so. 79 to 1. Wow. Wait, 78 That's to 2. That's literally math. not possible. But okay. 78 to 2. Okay. Math. 77 to 3, maybe. Math. Um, Michigan, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's reeling right now. I'm going to go Michigan. Now, I, I think Michigan, again, I think it spoke more to Rutgers, but I do think Michigan, What they finally got into Big Ten play, and they weren't beating the shit out of the team that they were playing. I'm still going with Michigan here just because Graham Mertz stinks right now, and Michigan just, they're feeling themselves a little bit. So, mm-hmm. Yep, that's why I'm going Michigan. Yep. I think Wisconsin has taken some massive uh, massive hits recently, and I think Michigan's primed to, to step up in the rankings after a nice Wisco win. Yep. This feels like a Harbaugh year where he goes undefeated until he plays Penn State or Ohio State or someone yep. like and that. And then the world's out to get him after that. Yep. Uh, Baylor, Oklahoma State. 
Very interesting game. Didn't think last week that we'd be talking about this game, but two very good teams. Both <laughs> Agreed. Unde- both undefeated teams. Um, I'm going to Oklahoma State at home because of my guy, Mike Gundy. Yeah, it's tough to pick against Mike Gundy, right? Like, yeah. it doesn't quite feel right. It doesn't feel good in the bones, in the system. Um, it's tough. I don't love either of these schools, but for the simple fact that I just I think it's going to be a race – uh, I'm going to go with Baylor, actually, this weekend. Really? Okay. I, I just, I don't know. I've never been a big Oklahoma State guy. It's a Mason Rudolph thing. It's not his fault. It's not their fault. I just don't like State. Give me Baylor. All right. Yeah, I mean, I get that. Like I said, I'm I'm a big Mike Gundy guy. Plus, dude, they're running back. Oh, what, what's his name? I had it written down. They're running. Uh, Jalen Warren, fucking mm-hmm. beast. But over 200 yards and how many touchdowns? Two touchdowns against Boise State. Not a pushover oh, wow. team either. That guy's a dog. If we're talking dog, <laughs> he's a dog. a dog. State's favored uh, three and a half points right now on the line set at 47 and a half. Yep. Uh, can we be able to cover from picking them to win and give me the over? And last one, sneaky good game, in my opinion. Florida, Kentucky. Interestingly sneaky because the number 10 team versus an unranked team, but the line, it's only at eight with the yep. over under 55 and a half. Yep. It really, so it's strength versus strength. Yes. Uh, Florida's running game, elite. Kentucky's run defense, not bad. Plus, they're playing at Kentucky, and I think if anything, outside of a few things here and there, for the most part, home teams seem to seem to be thriving this year. Yeah. So, uh, I think I'm going to go Florida, but it's going to be it's going to be close. Yeah, I'm going to go Florida, too, for the simple fact of uh, I'm biased when it comes to ranked versus unranked. But I do think it'll be closer than a lot of people will see. Or we'll find out that Kentucky are frauds. Yep. Uh, but I think either way, Florida wins this one. Yep. Now, they're, K- Kentucky seems like they're just they're a tough team. I don't know what it is about them. They just seem fucking tough. So there we go. All right. Don't tell my bookie. All right. Going back to my roots here, like I did last week, Coastal covered for, for me last week, so I'm going with them again against a shit UL Monroe team. They're easily going to cover 31 and a half. Um, 12, 4, and 1 against the spread in their last 17. I'm just going to leave that out there. I think Coastal covers easily. Michigan, Wisconsin. So, Gray Mertz sucks. <laughs> Michigan were apparently world beaters, and then they ran into Rutgers, that powerhouse over there, uh, and only put up twenty. I'm going the I'm going with the under here. I I think it, I know it's low, but I'm definitely going with the under because Wisconsin can't score, but Wisconsin's defense is really fucking good. So I'm going with the under. Oklahoma, Kansas State. I think Kansas State's going to be rocking, uh, especially coming after that loss next week. Oklahoma. Gives me no reason to believe in them whatsoever. I do think that ten and a half can easily, very easily be covered by Kansas State. I'm going to go Kansas State covering at plus ten and a half. Kentucky, Florida, like I alluded to, it's going to be very close. I think Kentucky mm. covers eight and a half. Just I know Florida's really good, but I think Kentucky's sneaky good, especially playing at home. Um, and then Boston College, Clemson. The line does not make sense to me because Boston College, dude, BC's feeling themselves right now. They're coming in 4 0. And D- get this. Mm-hmm. Since 2014, BC is 16 6 and 1 against the spread as a road underdog. Wow. So I'm going to go BC covering against Clemson. I don't hate that at all because Clemson has been dog crap. Yep. Yep. I, I win. So I will say last week. <laughs> I picked Wisco to beat Notre Dame on the show. I doubled back on that whenever I actually put in my bets, and I had Notre Dame <laughs> covering. Good. Um, Smart man. At plus six, and that was easy. Easy money. So, uh, yeah, so we'll see if I just change my mind on some of these. Normally, I just go with what I have on the screen right here, and I put these in, but, like, there was just I, I don't, don't blame know. you sometimes, man. Sometimes it's a gut feeling. It is. It is. So... Uh, all right, Deke, I gotta take the the silver shades off. It's time. It's time. 
I'm going to keep this one short, though. Oh, wow. Brief, to the point. This past game was a yawn. I mean, we were playing Villanova. Running game concerns me a little bit. But, fuck Indiana. Fuck that, that, I don't even know, golf dad. That t-ball dad, Tom Allen. That guy, hate that guy. I think we're going to get go out, get it done. Michael Penix Jr. is fucking garbage. Uh, and <laughs> it's it's a, a stripe out at Beaver Stadium, which I will be at this weekend. And it's... I don't, I don't really think this game is going to be close just because we're feeling ourselves right now. We're going to go in, get the job done at a 7.30 game in Happy Valley. I think we... I think we take this one easy. Indiana is going to be up for it, I think. I don't know if it's going to be a blowout necessarily, but I think we go in, take care of business, because Tom Allen is I, so fucking annoying to me at this point, especially after last year's overtime loss. I, You hate him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, he, he scared me at the beginning of the year, and now that they're bad, he just annoys me. Yep. So, I think that's fair. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I I think we got we got some we can't run the ball right now, which is concerning. But I think Clifford is actually playing very well. Um, yeah, he had a good game last week. Yeah, he did. He threw for over four hundred yards uh, against Villanova, but like still threw for over four hundred yards and still four hundred yards. And it's just it's gonna be it's gonna. I hope I get that feeling walking out of that. I never want to jinx my team. I I've done it before, so. I think we go in and take care of bu- take care of business. If we do that loss last year, I'm never gonna remember it because that that was the start of the on the fucking the end of the mm-hmm. end of my world last year was that overtime loss in the first game of the year. So and Panic players just fucking sucks. <laughs> he dude, Panic, what a fucking overrated piece of shit that guy is. Um, Love it. All right, Deke, that was a good one. Yes, sir, it was. Can't wait for this weekend. Tons of good matchups. I'm excited to see Clemson die. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, they're not good. They're no. just not good. And Plain and simple. It, th- now, next year, they could be the number one team <laughs> in the country. Because That's how they, we save ourselves. Yeah, because, I mean, they do have top ten recruiting classes, like, every year, and they have for a while. So, like, I don't think the train's stopping. I just think that they need some... They need to just get over the staleness right now. I think that's that's kind of what it is. So I almost hit. Um, it was a it was a parlay, five leg parlay. Uh, I almost hit. It was like ten bucks to win nine forty or something. One game off. Wow. K State. Oh. Yep. K-State. That's a realistic one too. Damn it. I know it sucked. It sucked, but I can dream, right? Smart man. Dream. Yeah. All right, Deke. Sweet, buddy. It's been a good one. Cheers with your non-existent Sh- cores. Shout out cores. I know. I need to buy more for tomorrow. I'm excited. Well, why don't you take a shot for the people? Damn it. I still got to go live on Instagram after this and cut players from Steph and Ben's team. Fun fact. Oh, nice. And then I get to eat my food. I am not on that list. This week. Congrats. Yeah. Don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with Texas. Except Watch the boot turn. Watch the boot turn. Horns down, though. There we go. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you think... Do, how big of a deal do you think, like, A&M is versus Texas down in Texas? Do you think it's, like, heavy? No, non-existent. I think Texas are gods. That, that bothers me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That really bothers me. But like you know how like it's like, oh, are you Pitt or are you Penn State? Even though Penn State's always ranked and Pitt's kind of just there sometimes. Yep. There's no are you Texas or Texas A and M or Texas Tech. It's you're Texas or you were born somewhere else. Yeah, that is true. A and M has a big following though. I'm sure they do. Huge but following. it ain't Texas. They're fu- they're a bunch of weirdos. Though. Have you ever heard the class ring <laughs> thing for A and M? No. Literally everyone, at least all guys that I've met through work and other areas, they wear class rings from A and M. It's a weird cult thing that they do. It's fucking bizarre. Does do they know that no one cares? Yeah. No, no. actually I don't know if they do. Oh they try they try to make it seem like people care. 
like I had this one guy that I worked with at my last company, big and M and M guy, and I asked yeah. I pretty much flat out said to him one day at the bar, I'm like, Hey, so like your your guys class ring thing, it's pretty fucking weird. <laughs> And he goes, it is, dude, it's a legacy thing. You just don't understand. And I'm like, okay, buddy, like, uh, whatever. Like, like oh, the only rings I got in college were for soccer. And like, I don't, I don't think I even cared about a class ring. I have my high school class ring that I thought was cool because I always used to mess with my dad and moms. The college class ring is for weirdos. Yeah. Well, and, and they wear it. I believe it's not they do. just like a symbolic thing. They fucking it's probably wear worth it. another semester at school. They better wear it. <laughs> yeah, they probably do have to pay like ten grand for it. Where? Fucking ridiculous. Anyway, a And M weirdos. All right, I think I think we went long enough here. <laughs> Horns down, baby. <laughs>